Well, good morning, Arkansas. Hopefully, everybody's had a, had a great week, week, weekend and enjoying the final day of vacation for many after a great holiday season. Unfortunately, we get to end that holiday season with another threat to Arkansas weather. And as we've been talking about over the, over the last few days, severe weather does look likely for much of the natural state today. Right. So, said so before, we do have that enhanced risk for severe weather for much of Arkansas. We're going to talk about the significant tornado uh, threat here in just a little bit. We're going to go over all the timing and all your questions here. So, biggest thing is we talk about this every stream. Remain patient with this, guys. There's a lot of information we're going to be getting out along um, with monitoring a lot of information at this point. So, the longer you stay in the live stream, the better shot you've got. <clears throat> of getting your questions answered here. So right now we're kind of taking a look at what we call surface observations. This is current temperatures across the state along with the dew points being overlaid. So right now we've got 54 in Fayetteville. We've got, uh, not 54, 46 in Fayetteville, excuse me. 54 in uh, Fort Smith. We've got 70 here in Little Rock and that is very concerning. With it being eight o'clock in the morning, you're already at 70 degrees. So that means you're very primed and ready to go for the potential of seeing severe weather. Also down in El Dorado, we've got 66, 68 in Camden, 70 in Texarkana as well. So we're already seeing the 60s and 70s first thing in the morning. And you know whenever we have severe weather, that's normally the biggest red flag right there is seeing that 60s and 70s already in place there. And you can see the moisture right now across much of central and southern Arkansas and eastern Arkansas. Now, for our folks up there in northwest Arkansas, you, you, you're can, you can see the struggle right now. You can see the Ozark effect. Now, mm -hmm. we, we, talk about, we talk about this a lot mm -hmm. with winter <clears throat> weather, how the cold air has a hard time coming around the mountains. Well, same thing is Gulf moisture as well has a hard time coming from the south to the north. And you, you can see it coming around the Ozarks in, the, in Oklahoma and around the o Ozarks in northeast Arkansas. As our warm air continues to surge north throughout the day, yep. eventually that cold air will be overtaken. But it's going to take a little bit longer. As you saw in the outlook post this morning, our tornado risk, our significant tor tor tornado risk, got bumped all the way to the to the Fayetteville fa fa area yep. because confidence has has it increased that that cold air will be overcome as we head into the afternoon hours. Right, and you can take a look at this, and this is another thing that we like to use, and this is what we call the surface base cape or the severe thunderstorm fuel that is currently in place right now. So everything you're looking at right now is current data. This is not you know, a model or anything like that. This is current information at this point. And you can see already, as I said before, as of eight o'clock this morning, 8 a.m., we already have instability values approaching 1,000. Even in some cases down here in southwest Arkansas, you're already over 1,000. And that is going to continue to event northward as we get towards later this morning and into the afternoon. So and we're going to show yeah. you something here in just a minute. This is, it's an, it's an observed actual live data sounding from the National Weather Service yep. in Little Rock. And we're going to go over that in just a second yep. and explain a little bit more about what that what that means as well. Yeah, exactly. So here's what we're going to do at this point. Let's go ahead and talk about this ongoing risk at this time here. So this is for today, by the way, and we have the enhanced risk for much of Arkansas. We're talking from Fayetteville to Little Rock to El Dorado, Magnolia, Texarkana, over to Memphis. This is the area of concern. Those that are in this slight risk area, that is far northwestern Arkansas, and also... Uh, for southeastern Arkansas, you need to be watching the situation as well. I'm fully expecting some additional changes as we get towards later this morning and into the early afternoon hours here. But don't rely on going moderate. Don't pay attention to the highest risk and stuff like that, guys. You need to have a game plan ready to go. If you're anywhere in Arkansas, you know anybody that's going to be in Arkansas for today. That's the biggest game plan for today, okay? So you got to make sure you have a game plan ready to go. Now, let's talk about this. And this has jumped significantly yep. from when we did that live stream yesterday. Yesterday, remember, we were talking about from central Arkansas to southwest. Now we're starting to include much of north central Arkansas, eastern Arkansas, the I-30, I-40 corridor. Those are going to be the areas of concern as we get towards this afternoon and this evening. 
any tornadoes that get going will have the potential of producing um, EF2 or stronger potential. And this is well. also the area that is at the greatest risk yeah. to see those long track ones as well. Yeah, big time. Um, and uh, and for some of you that were around, it's it's many many years ago, January twenty first of nineteen ninety nine. Yep. It's a start starting to remind me a little bit of that setup where we where we were kind of cloudy, kind of quiet in the morning, and then we just had supercell supercell multiple moving across state. That was that was the White County setup where uh, BB and Cersei, bought a yeah. lot of those got hit time and time again. Again, I'm not saying it's gonna be exactly like that, but what I'm saying is it reminds me of several different setups. January 21st of uh, 1999, yep. January of 2020 as mm -hmm. well, yep. and even even our November 4th, yep. but to a larger scale. Yep. Um, so, so, so again, but our ingredients are much more significant than what they've been um, for our last several events. As, as we mentioned yesterday, you got to have warmth and humidity, instability. You have all three of those. You have plenty of shear already in in the place, yep. just because it is the uh, winter time. Yep. That's, and that's you thing. couple that with the springtime instability and warmth that we're currently seeing, yep. you run the risk to see severe weather, especially it's January, and you know January warm air mm -hmm. does mean typically means severe weather in, in the state. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying, guys. Unless. Uh, excuse me, if you're in much of this state at this point, we're talking from central Arkansas down to south Arkansas. A lot of people, especially in south Arkansas, don't have the weather coverage and stuff like that. They don't get, you know, a lot of uh, network TV coverage down there. So make sure that you are sending them to us. Make sure they are staying updated with the latest. And the biggest thing I'm going to stress today as well, if you have a weather radio. Now, if you don't have one, it's not the end of the world. Uh, we're currently, I'm going to get that server ready to go this morning so you guys can kind of tune in um, to what we call the NOAA All Hazards Weather Radio. So you guys can listen to that as well along with following us. But if you do have a weather radio, make sure the batteries are good and everything like that this morning before things start getting going by the time we get towards this afternoon here. But I just kind of wanted to stress the significant tornado threat for today here. Now, this is the overall mm -hmm. tornado threat here. And this is why we're stressing so much, not for just central or southern Arkansas, but for northern and southeastern mm -hmm. Arkansas as well. Don't pay attention to the highest risk, okay? Just if, if we get an update at 1130 and it goes moderate, then this risk, there's gonna be some areas that's gonna have a quote unquote high tornado risk. Don't think that it's a high or nothing, okay? Low end tornado risks do produce. Storms do not care about severe risk. As a matter of fact, I think Kim, one of our followers, made the greatest point. Storms are, are, storms are colorblind to risk. They don't care where it is. They go for any areas. So make sure that you have a game plan, guys. I've, I've seen some concerning comments, not only on here, but just across the board about people talking about, oh, it's a low risk. They're, they're hyping it up. They're trying to panic everybody, night, blah, blah, blah. It's not like that, folks, okay? We're trying to make sure everybody is ready to go. Don't let your guard down just because you're in a low risk area. That's the biggest thing I'm gonna tell you right now. So make sure you have a game plan for today. Make sure you have that 20 other safe place um, safe, safety plan ready to go for today as well here. Now, also, not only the tornado threat, but the high, risk, high wind risk as well. Yep. Right now, the biggest thing with the with the high wind, high wind risk. Yep. Now, this is going to be more of the second wave that's going to come through this evening. Yep. And the reason being for that is because storms are going to form in Oklahoma and Texas and push east with our front. Mm -hmm. Now, my concern with this is that you may not see more of a line to be closer to central yep. and eastern Arkansas. Yep. And that's where your damage and wind risk, I think, could be a little bit more maximized than it will be in, in, in uh, western Arkansas. Western, western Arkansas, I'm very concerned about those supercell str structures, especially if round one is looking to form further east. Yep. So that, that, that looks to leave the western half of the state untouched for much of, of the day. Yep. And if that's the case, and we talked about the the, the EML yesterday, which is the elevated mix of layer, yeah. that looks to be dry for much of the day. That's our capping inversion that we talked about. And that was the capping inversion that we said could affect and prevent much morning uh, rain. Right. Currently, 8.30 in the morning, looking at the uh, radar, radar, we right. have nothing, nothing on radar this yeah. morning. That's Except for a very few isolated showers, 
And again, those are what we call warm air infection showers, which just means your your instability is rapidly increasing across the state. Okay. Now, you have a lot of wind aloft that has to come down to the surface. And as those storms move across the state, that's going to bring those winds down. Yep. And you're also going to have a very strong low level jet, 90 to 100 knots coming coming sweeping into the state at the same time. Goodness, yep. Um, yes, and what that's going to do is those wind aloft have to come down at some point. Mm -hmm. And typically that happens with your stronger storms. So yep. that's why our damaging wind risk is so high. It's not hatched because confidence is greater in tornadoes it than it is damaging winds. Wind. Yeah. Supercellular stru structures tend to produce less damaging winds, more tornadic structures. Yep. Linear tends to produce more damaging winds, less tornado structures. So yep. right now, that's what we're looking at. But again, all modes are likely today. If you get put under a severe warning, treat it the same way. Yep, that's gonna be the biggest thing for today, guys. So let's talk about the timing. And I know a lot of people are kind of tuning in. You know, the first thing they, they want to know is the timing. What we're gonna be looking at in terms of the severe weather now. This hasn't changed much from yesterday. We're still looking at that round one and that round two. Now, the biggest uncertainty right now is where does round one form? That's going to be the biggest thing at this point. So this is why we're stressing you guys so much. Don't plug, don't, don't plug out from the weather today. Okay, this is going to be one day that you need to stay weather aware, regardless of where you are in the state. I do not care about low risk and stuff like that. Everybody across the state needs to have a game plan ready to go for today. This risk can rapidly change over a course of an update or two. Remember, we've got one coming up at 1130. We've got one coming up at 3 o'clock. Those are two updates coming up, and that's still plenty of time for changes. So make sure that you have a game plan ready to go for today, regardless of where you are in the state. It doesn't matter if you're in the low or you're in the medium. Have a game plan ready to go. So this is the timing for today. First round, by the way, we're still looking at that 2 to 5 p.m. time frame mm -hmm. for Southern Arkansas. And like Dave mentioned before, this map is also going to change a couple of times today as well as we get a better idea on where round one starts. Now, here's the problem. If we get to noon and 1 o'clock and we don't see round one at all, then this map goes away and we go straight to round two. So keep that in mind across the board. But right now, we're still forecasting round one uh, from Southern Arkansas 2 to 5. Central Arkansas 5 to 7 and then in Northeastern Arkansas we're talking 6 to 8 and this is like so far This is going to change a lot over the next couple of hours So make sure you stay with us guys. You cannot unplug from us today And, and again the bet the bet the best thing to look at with this. Yeah, okay Is that I'm saying a lot of people, you know, are, are saying hey, you know I'll let my guard down because I was in a low risk now. I'm in the medium risk you know, you're now, and this is why we say, it exactly. does not matter what risk area you are, you are in. Yeah. Spring, spring, Springdale had a tornado in a marginal risk. You know, had an EF3 at, 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 at that. You can have a tornado no matter what. Yep. No matter what risk, you, you can have it in a general thunderstorm risk. You know, the biggest thing is, is that you don't need to let your guard down regardless of the risk. Now the whole state pretty much in an enhanced risk. Again. Yep. Severe weather does not care about risk, but you know, the biggest thing is you have to have everything in place for severe weather. Are we calling for our point out right now? But there is heightened risk for severe weather today. Yep. If the risk increases, I don't think we're gonna see a moderate risk simply because of too much uncertainty yeah. regarding regarding how much sunshine we see today, how much rain, morning rain we, we see. I'm looking at right, right now, other than these light instability showers. I don't see much in the way that's going to inhibit the the atmosphere that that yeah, much. much. Yeah. Um, but that being said, everybody needs to stay weather aware all day today. Again, we're even talking eastern Arkansas yeah. late tonight. Right. We're talking after midnight for much of eastern Arkansas. So this is going to be an all day, all night threat. We we're, we're going to be starting about one or two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Probably going till three or four o'clock in the morning. Definitely. So. That's the biggest thing, guys. And, and one more thing I want to address as well. If you don't see severe weather today, if you don't see it, consider it a blessing. I don't know why that's the case. I don't know why people get upset about not seeing severe weather. Winter weather, understand. It's one thing not see winter weather. But severe weather, you should never be upset by not seeing it because that means you didn't lose your house or you didn't lose the people around you or yourself. So if you don't see severe weather, it's a bust or something like that, your area doesn't see it, 
awesome, congratulations, you got through it without seeing anything. But I don't want to hear a single comment about, you know, oh, these guys are talking about this, talking about that. No, it should not be the case with severe weather. Yeah. We, we should always have a game plan ready to go, even if it doesn't happen. That's the biggest thing here, okay? Even in the low risk areas, don't let your guard down, guys. We've seen cases, a million cases of tornadoes occurring, high winds occurring, and low risk areas and slight risk areas. We hear it all the time with these big events mm -hmm. where the moderate risk is just quiet, but the slight risk and the enhancers has taken off. That's the biggest thing. So make sure you have a game plan ready to go here. Now, this is round number two, and this is... Like I said, round number two is kind of standing out right now. We're kind of watching guidance yeah. closely at this point. Round number two is going to be coming in late this evening and into the overnight hours. And another thing is, don't let your guard down just because it's an overnight overnight threat either. You can still get tornadoes overnight. It's a myth for yeah. you not to see tornadoes in overnight hours. It can happen. Ask the folks in the Ohio Valley. Ask the folks in the southeast. You can get severe weather and you can get tornadoes overnight it can happen so make sure mm -hmm. you stay weather aware today guys no matter what no matter if you're in a low risk or in a high risk or anything like that make sure you have a game plan ready to go for today okay now go ahead all right so the biggest thing so the, the biggest thing is to remember with this event and let's take a look at the LTK sound okay um because this is something i want you to tell us so this is so basically what this is this is what we this is what we look at in terms of forecasting, it's going to look confusing looking at it too. First what of all. we're going to be looking at for severe weather today. This is what you call a loaded gun sounding for severe weather in Gulf State. Even with showers, you have temperatures around 70. You have dew points in the 60. You have a capping and burning, and you can see the cap. You see the green line. It spreads how out. It, how it spreads out. Right there so this is what we call a yeah. gap. That is what we yeah. call cap. This is what we look at. This means storms can't go. They they will stop. Until that becomes together, they will stop. And that means they can't go up. That means anything going up in the atmosphere won't affect any instability, won't affect anything because they can't break that cap. Now, if you look at the cape down down there, 12, it, it is over 1,000 already. 1,200 already. In the wintertime, you only need roughly around 500 for severe weather. Yeah. There's, there's been some cases where you need to point out our yeah. shear yeah. as well. What yeah. we look at is the is the is the lowest shear yeah. as well, which is going to be um, right over here on your left on your on, on the graphic on your okay. bottom right side. I can't get the pin up for some reason, but yeah, but right in there, that's where you where you see the uh, where it says um, S F S C one kilometer right there. That's where your your shear profiles are going to be. So this is like Derek said before. This is a very concerning sounding first thing in the morning. You don't ever want to yeah. see this first thing in the morning. And if you see, if you look at the right hand side of that of that graph, and, yeah. and you see the what we call wind wind bars, yeah. and you can already see the atmospheric rotation Beginning. in the atmosphere again. This was taken. This was taken early this morning. Six a.m. I believe. At six a.m. this morning. Six so this was taken yeah. over around six a.m. this morning, and you had this much instability that only increases throughout the day today. This is why we are so concerned about well, the tornado threat yep. and just the overall severe threat yep. in in Arkansas. Yep. You know, if anybody re remembers the 2014 event, we had heavy rain all morning long. We had rain all morning long, then it got quiet. Then all of a sudden you had one super sub producing a, a uh, EF4 in Bologna Mayflower. Then you had a few a few others that, that day well. Yeah, Was it a widespread right event? No. But oh, it was an event, yeah. and it only took one. Jonesboro of 2020, we had morning rain. We had rain all morning. It rained. Everybody thought, oh, it's not going to do much. Everybody was worried about Illinois. Guess what happened? We had a tornado in Jonesboro that that day. So the key thing to remember is I know everybody says morning rain is going to lessen threat, may lessen threat, cloud cover, stuff like that. Not necessarily. Can it happen? Yes. Can it reduce threat? Some yes, but... When you have this much ingredients in place, like you're seeing on the I don't, screen, I was going to say I don't think the cloud cover is going to matter the at this screen, point. You have everything in place for severe weather today. That yep. is why your tornado risk increased this morning yep. with the latest SPC outlook. This is what SPC lo lo looks at for their day one outlook. Yep. They throw out models at, at this point, models to an extent, but they look at real time data 
like we look, look, at, look at as right. well, analyze every little piece of data. Yep. So you want to know what we look at? This is what we look at right here. Yep, definitely. So we're going to go back to the time real quick. And Derek, if you want to start pulling us some questions, yep. um, just let me know here, guys. I know a lot of people are kind of wondering about the time frame. We just pulled it up back on the screen, guys. Um, this is what we're going to be looking at for right there, round two. I'm going to put round, round one back up in just a little bit. Um, okay. But the biggest thing is, guys, is we're not trying to scare anybody okay we don't hide we don't do all the other uh, nonsense we don't do that okay the biggest thing is we want to make sure you guys are good to go don't rely on just oh it's going to be raining it's going to end the threat if we say it ends that's when it ends but at this point looking at that sounding first thing in the morning 6 a.m by the way 6 a.m you already have 1200k in Little Rock that is very, very, very concerning, especially in January. This was something that you would normally see in March or in April or something like that with a spring event, not in January. So keep that in mind here. The sounding is already ready to go. It's what we call a loaded gun yeah. sounding here in Little Rock. So uh, weather app says it starts storming around 132 in Little and, and BB. Will those be severe? Help stabilize. They will. That first, that, first, that first round is concerning. That first round is going to be concerning. Because yeah. that's what we call an arc of severe thunderstorms. Matter of fact, let's go to that real quick. I have five to seven with seven for this timing is going to shift yeah. a lot over the next now, seven, hour or so. Data yeah. has an arc of, of uh, storms between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. Yes. Yeah. And that's concerning because that's the middle of the day. Those could actually be a little bit more. Those, those can be moving southwest to northeast into the best environment at the time of day. So those are those ones we're gonna have to watch closely. I would not be shocked to see a tornado watch as soon as noon today. Yeah. Just for that reason because of, of that possibility. Yeah. Now that being said, if those move through early in the day, say for example those move through by four o'clock, five o'clock, your second round is not gonna get going in Texas, Oklahoma till six or seven yeah. and then move east. And your environment's just gonna, gonna keep give getting you going, yeah. A chance for the for the for the instability to move back north, your shear to remain in place, and think, keep this in mind. Those go northeast. Your wind to come out of southeast, and those stay away from your southeast wind. That's gonna, that is going to keep your southeast flow and southerly flow going yep. through much of the day. Yep. So that's even be, behind that first round. So that's going to be the biggest thing, guys. And like I said before, we're not trying to scare anybody or anything like that. We just want people to be prepared. Okay. Don't let your guard down. Today is not the day to let your guard down. If you let your guard down, it's going to be on you. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So make sure you have a game plan ready to go. James, great question, but at this given point, I I don't even think you're going to... The sun will help in terms of the instability and stuff like that, but seeing that sounding first thing in the morning with no kind of sunshine in place, I mean, right now we have what we call low-level clouds. Above that is where you have all sunshine right now. So the so the instability is allowed to increase even with the cloud cover in place. So will that increase the threat at, at tonight? The biggest thing is with this is not only just the inst instability, it's the wind shear. I talk about this, me, me and Derek both talk about this all the time with the low level jet. It increases at night, naturally it increases at night. So what happens is once that sun goes down, the low level jet increases. So it's not only just the instability you have to worry about, it's the wind shear. The wind shear is gonna be very favorable for supporting supercell development, which will include the potential tornadoes. So keep that in mind, guys, okay? If the sun doesn't come out your location, it doesn't mean that's gonna happen or anything like that. If you and see a little bit of rain, it doesn't mean that's gonna happen. Make sure you have a game plan ready. We are getting reports from followers. Yeah. Um, there's already uh, sunshine breaking through the cloud in South Arkansas. Okay. Behind this initial round of uh, showers, home, like I said, instability showers as yeah. this moves north. Sure. And that's what matter, we're matter, watching closely. Matter of fact, thank you for that. I'm going to go ahead and um, get satellite imagery up real quick. Um, while you're while, while you're doing that, kind of yeah. take a look at some comments here. So um, there was Haley's comment. I just saw hers. Um, she says, should I be worried about, you know, round one or round two? You should be worried about both at this point. It's both. It's not just, you know, a specific, um, a specific one or anything like that. Cindy, yes, 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 a million times yes, okay? Even in the low risk areas, and that's the biggest thing. Don't be upset if you don't see severe weather. Just don't be upset. There's no reason to be upset if you don't see severe weather today. We want you guys to be prepared. This is a significant risk for Arkansas. 
mainly for the potential tornadoes. Yeah. You know, normally we're talking about, you know, the damaging wind wind or the hail threat being high and stuff like that. This is a more tornado threat than it is a damaging wind threat, which is the reason why we're harping it yeah. so much to you guys right now. Make sure you have a game plan ready to go at this point. Okay, so uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see here. Kim, I love Kim's comment. Don't let your guard down at all. Okay, don't let your guard down here. She's been a long time follower with us, guys. We tell you guys how it is. Make sure you have a game plan ready to go here. So, what we're going to do for just a second is we're going to take a look at what we call um, current satellite imagery. And this is concerning, Derek. This is very, very concerning. We're going to switch this over. Um, to this real fast here. So uh, let me see. Here. Yeah, yeah, Matt. <laughs> I told you. I told you guys. That was that. He, he's he's the one that's been saying it's going to go north yeah. northeast. Don't say it anymore. Please don't say it anymore because that's what's been happening every time he's asked if it's going north or northeast. And it's something, happened. Something else I do <laughs> want to mention about this too as well. Yeah. The so floor, floor then here's the thing. We yeah. also there's something that has kind of been swept under the rug because of the ongoing severe threat for damage to wind and tornado. We do have a flood threat as well. Yeah. It's a, you know, here's the thing, you have dead vegetation, you were just in an Arctic outbreak seven days ago. Yep. Everything's kind of dormant now. You get two to four inches of rain, especially eastern half of the state, on dormant dormant vegetation that's gonna to lead to flash flooding. We've had a lot of rain over the last week. It's I know it's weird, we were just in the ground four months ago. Yep. Now we're talking about flooding. But the flooding threat is there today. There's a flash flood watch for much of the southern and eastern half of the state for two to four inches of rain. Now, that being said, the reason why that's there is because you can have multiple rounds of storms training over the same area. So, turn around, don't drown. That's the flooding threat. It's kind of going under the radar today, but it's also there. Now, here's the thing. If we get flash flood emergencies along with tornado warnings, oh yeah, that's going to be fun for us because because we we do cover both. Yeah, especially for that type of situation, it's going to be interesting. We're going to have to go back and forth between the two. Yeah. I don't think it's going to get that significant, but it's something to watch as we go deeper into the night nighttime night hours. Yeah, that's going to be the biggest thing. I'm, I'm getting the pen loaded up, yep. so um, I see here. So go to Callie's comment real quick. I want to address that because a lot of people are very concerned about that, especially with the end the tornado threat. It doesn't the big, the biggest thing is, don't focus on the warning. He made a great point yesterday in the live stream. It shouldn't matter if it's a PDS or a Wrangler tornado watch. I'm, and it's concerning. I see a lot of people, yeah. you know, let their guard down in a Wrangler tornado watch. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. It will burn you at the end of the day. I promise you it will. So. Make sure that you have a game plan ready to go. It's going to be questionable. I think with the multiple rounds of severe thunderstorms, it's going to be very, very difficult yep. to get a PDS type situation. By the way, if anybody's wondering, for those that are going to be commenting, it means particularly dangerous situation. Okay, that's all that means. So at this moment, I'm going to say no. And I think he's going to say no as well. But it shouldn't matter. A yep. regular tornado watch is just as significant mm -hmm. as dealing with a PDS tornado watch. Only thing what a PDS means, it's mean, it's meant for the most extreme type situations. Even if it doesn't happen, you can still see tornadoes in a tornado watch itself. So I'm fully expecting those watches to start rolling out by noon and stuff like that. But to answer your question, it's going to be a no. But if it does happen, we'll be here. We'll keep you guys updated on that. But the but biggest thing, I'm, satellite I'm concerned about the satellite. I was getting ready to get ready to tell you about the satellite. It's... It's concerning me right now. Go ahead. Now, the big thing about this is that, is that most of this right now is cloud cover. We also have a, a very thick layer of fog, especially across the northern half of the state, yeah. as that warm air continues to push north over very, very, very cold uh, soil. So, as this continues, the biggest thing is we are watching this area, Oklahoma and Texas. That's the area we are watching closely for cloud breaks. And will those cloud breaks transition further east, yep. will, they, will they transition further northeast? Because the more cloud breaks you get this afternoon, the greater the risk could increase. I don't think you're, they're gonna need it, but it will only further help because the, the big, the old adage is sunshine, severe, especially on, on severe days, sunshine bad, clouds good. Nine out of 10 right times, now. it lowers the threat to an extent. Don't let your guard down if it's cloudy all day because you have cloud breaks, you, and all those cloud breaks are moving northeast. Yeah. This is what we call the EML. 
This is that elevated mix layer working into the atmosphere ahead of your system, which is still west of I-35. Yeah. And what that's going to do is help destabilize the atmosphere more throughout the morning hours. So, so the showers you're seeing on your weather apps in your morning, those are what we call, insta like, like I've mentioned, instability showers. With increasing instability over cold ground, you, you tend to get those little instability showers early in the morning. Yeah. You, if you live longer, saw long enough to know 9 out of 10 times we get rainfall in the morning before several, a severe event. The biggest thing to keep in mind is that our last two events, we were cold the, the morning of and the day prior. Yep. This time, you're not. Yep, and I've drawn out the um, the upper level low right there, so yep. that's gonna be your system right there, and you can see the, the moisture beginning to come in, and your cloud breaks beginning to come in, but that's very concerning seeing that first thing in the morning uh, with your cloud breaks being in place, you guys, and it's, it's gonna refresh itself um, at this point here, but the biggest thing is making sure that you have a game plan for today, guys. So, uh, let me see here. So. Let me go over to, uh, let me see here. Those that are wondering, by the way, what does PDS mean? It means particularly dangerous situation. It's, I, I'm going to say no to that right now. I'm going to debunk the entire thing right now. Don't focus on that, okay? I'm stressing this right now. Don't focus on the highest risk areas. Just because you're in a low risk doesn't mean you're not going to see anything. It's, severe weather is not high or nothing. It should never be like that. It should never be like that. So make sure you have a game plan ready to go at this point. When I'm concerned about Stacy, I see Stacy. She's a really good follower of us. Um, the round that I'm most concerned about is going to be both. It's going to be both. It's going to be both, both round one and round number two. It's, it's both of them that I'm going to be worried about. If round one doesn't happen, round two is going to take, this, it's going to take the, um, the cake with this. If round one does happen, round two will have to be watched. Um, I think what's going to end up happening is your environment is going to recover before round two gets here. And another thing we're going to have to watch watch for as well, there slowdowns, yep. you know, timing. Where does round one form? Because if round one forms further to the east than expected, then round two is going to have all that instability to work with. If round one gets out of here, the environment re-destabilize, um, re round two slows down. There's a lot of question marks right now here. This is the reason why we're looking at this, and this is what we call the satellite imagery um, at this point. So just kind of keep that in mind for today. It's going to be both, and you need to have a game plan ready for both at this point. Also, love this comment as well. Treat those severe thunderstorm warnings just like it was a tornado warning. Okay, You're going to see a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings with tornado possible tags for today. Make sure that you're taking cover because spin-ups can occur with this. Don't just sweep severe thunderstorm warnings under the rug because it's not a big red flashing box. Don't do that, okay? Make sure you have a severe weather uh, plan ready to go, even if it's severe thunderstorms at this point. Love your comment as well, Drew, okay? Um, the, I, I didn't get the chance to read it. Um, if, if it doesn't matter, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter if, if um, remember, it just, it does not matter if the tornado risk is slight, it can always change at any time, anywhere. That's what we're stressing right now. We're eight o'clock in the morning. You guys know full well, full well, for as many live streams I've done first thing in the morning, I've come to you at 8 a.m. with one thing, and by the time we got ready for coverage, it was a whole different situation. Yep. So make sure you have a game plan ready to go, okay? Just keep that in mind uh, for today. Make sure your, your cell phones are charged as well. We've got chargers all over here right now. Me and Derek both, we both got our phones ready to go. So make sure you have a game plan for today, okay? I know it sounds like a, <laughs> like, a, you know, a broken record saying that over and over and over again, but just I'm stressing that right yeah. now. So And another, another big thing to keep in mind. So, you know, I went, I've seen a lot of PDS comments, a lot of PDS comments. All right, folks, I'm going to re reiterate this from yesterday, okay? Yeah. does not matter if it's PDS or not. It should never matter. To me, every tornado warning is a particularly dangerous situation because it's a threat to life and property. If it's a threat to a life and property, it's a threat and it, it is a dangerous situation, regardless, regardless of the wording. The wording should not matter, never should matter, because even if it's a severe thunderstorm warning, severe thunderstorm camera, there's a tornado with little or no warning. Yep. Therefore, that's why we say take cover and it's a severe thunderstorm warning. If we see a tornado possible take on that, we're definitely going to take you, tell you to take cover from that. But again, also, keep this in mind as well. There are football games on today. Okay, I know most of them are going to be on ABC, which is which is Channel Seven now, or KNW in Northwest Arkansas, KIT in Northeast Arkansas. 
Do not hound them. If they break into coverage today, do not hound anybody of your local Mets around the state. Because I agree. Yeah. They, are, they are protecting lives, and your life is more important than a football game on TV. But you can always watch my And play. here's the thing. We're going to see it. We're, we will see it across the uh, state today. Yep. We're, we're going to see it. It's, it's going to happen because that's the, way, that's the way people are. And we see it across the southeast. We see it. Don't. Please let them do their job. Let us do our jobs. Don't worry about that football game. You, 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 you can always watch it again. Yep. And keep in mind, if you lose cable internet today, we will be live all day long. Yep. If you have a smart TV and you have YouTube on that TV, you can watch us on your TV. Yep. That's going to be big exciting. And I'm going to try to show you guys how to do that later on as well. So that was Drew's comment from earlier here. So, uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing, Drew. Uh, not Drew. Uh, Derek. Not Derek. Um, Dustin made that comment. You know the situation is bad when Derek and us, Derek and me are in the studio together. That's the biggest thing. Uh, normally, you know, either he'll do it or I'll do it. We can do it separately. But if it's both of us, you know the situation is pretty bad. So, um, that's the biggest thing here, guys. Uh, Rose, I love that comment as well. Biggest thing is having your game plan ready to go uh, for today. So what we're going to do for just a bit, which we haven't had a lot, to, hadn't had a chance to do this, is we're going to take a look at current computer model guidance. Okay, now this given junction, like Derek said before, computer model guidance is 20% where surface ops, and let's take the back. Computer model guidance is 10% where surface ops are 90. Basically, what we mean surface ops is current radar current temperatures, current dew points, everything that's current, because that we, we can finally look at things uh, currently right now. 10% will be guidance. That's just a future cast, kind of see what, what, what it's doing down the road. So this is the HR, and I'm gonna double check and make sure, because we've been live uh, for going on 30 minutes, so I'm gonna double check and make sure that it's updated. Um, but let's take a look at the HR for just a little bit. Now, I wanna urge caution uh, with the HR, okay? Um, and Derek, this is concerning me right out of the gate. You've got some, comment. you've got some uh, supercells starting to go up. So, um, go to the basement or in, in, inside of a room without windows, lower floor, bathroom, closet, center hallway. If possible, avoid sheltering in, a, in any room with a window for added protection. Grab something sturdy like a heavy table, a workbench. Um, cover your body with a blanket, sleeping yeah. bag, or mattress. Great. Loved, love that comment. Great, comment. great, great yeah. comment. So that's the biggest thing, uh, Jennifer. We really do appreciate that comment, guys. Take her advice. And if a tornado warning happens, regardless of any wording, if it's radar indicated or a tornado warning, I know the biggest thing I think when we were growing up is it's a not going to do anything tornado warning and it's going to do some tornado warning. Yep. It should never be that way, guys. Okay. Every tornado warning is the same. It's there for a reason. So make sure you have a game plan ready to go. Now, Derek, um, I'm starting to get concerned with DHR taking a look at this um, you've got some super cells starting to go up and this is right around that three o'clock time frame here over here in southwestern Arkansas this is very concerning folks and I'm, I'm noticing a trend too how it's starting to trend downward with that round one um, and that's gonna be the biggest thing that we're gonna have to watch very closely as we get towards this afternoon into this evening so just kind of keep that in mind. We'll go back now another that's round one. one. Now, this is round one. No, that's round one, the arcing of supercells coming up. And then round two is the evening round with the, with the main line of storm, yeah. which is still a broken line of storm. Yeah. Now, I want to keep this in mind. That is starting to hone in on a round three. There's round three right there. Now, keep this in mind. Round one, round two come through. It's going to wipe out most of the instability. This is where you may see more of a damaging wind risk versus your tornado risk. Yeah. And you may not even see super weather with this with this third round, but you all see why your flooding risk is so high in the eastern eastern half of the state. Yeah. It's gonna be cellular as it moves east, it's gonna it's gonna hit the hit the high pressure to the east and form into more of a of a massive rain shield and move northeast. Now, that being said, yeah, I have station. noticed the rain totals are going down. Yeah, look at your instability. Yeah. Um, now have over 2,000 instruments. You got almost 3,000 now down here in southwestern Arkansas. And this is this a is head of the first round. Yeah, this is something that, remember a couple of days ago, we were talking about the instability concerns. Okay. We were talking about, you know, 500 to 1,000. Now we're talking almost 3,000. So there, there, there's some significant concerns. Let's take a look at what we call the significant tornado perimeter as well. And there's kind of sipping, uh, sipping through the comments. Um, at this point here. And there it is. So there's round number one. Round number one. And round number one to be tornadic as well. I want to stress that. 
if we start seeing tornado warnings around number one, we will break in. We will keep you guys updated on that. But the biggest thing I'm worried about is round number two because you can see round number one gets out of the area and then round number two comes surging back in by the time we get towards tonight. Tonight's going to be a very, very dangerous night for us here in Arkansas because you're going to have to watch that close. And any boundaries that are left by round number one, there's going to be the areas of concern as well. And then what ends up happening is with round number three back over here, like there's a four more of a damaging wind threat, but still have to be watched for that isolated tornado threat as well here, okay? So that's the biggest thing, guys. I know a lot of people, let's talk about this real quick, because I know a lot of people are kind of concerned and all that, you know, the anxiety is just through the roof today. And I get it. I completely yes. get it. We completely get it. When you talk about tornadoes, especially how high the tornado risk is today, it's going to be there. So make sure that you prepare in advance. That's what we're doing right now. We're giving you guys a live stream right now, going over all the questions, all the comments and stuff like that. We're telling you guys this right now. That way you have a, 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 a game plan. Yeah. To answer your question about the large hail threat, I think the large hail threat, especially with round number one, may be there. Well, you have us a little bit of now color. Now you're talking oh, yeah. about the increase. Now that you're talking about the increase the in lapse, case, yeah, and your lapse rates. rates increasing. It's going to be yes and no. Yeah. Because yes, there will be large hail, but the question is going to be is how large will it actually be? Yeah. And that's something we're going to have to watch for as we go throughout the afternoon. If we start getting more sunshine, your lapse rates will go further. Then that could actually increase your hail risk to an extent. And another thing that I'm worried about, too, is with the HRR breaking the cloud cover right around noon today. I mean, this is very, 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 very serious situation, guys. So make sure you have a game plan ready to go. But the biggest thing is having multiple warning sources, weather radio with us. You know, Zachary Hall, I know he's going to be out chasing, but he's going to be keeping you guys updated as well. KNWA up there in northwestern Arkansas. You know, you got Jonesboro, KIT up there. You know, we've got people around the state that's going to keep you updated. So if they got to break in for football coverage, you're just going to have to deal with it. That's how it's going to be today. So make sure you have a game plan ready to go for today. Know your geography. I'm going to post this as soon as this live stream is over. Your counties and your cities. You've got to know where you are. We're not going to be sitting here going over questions about specific cities or counties during tornado warning coverage unless you're under that warning box. you got to know where you are. You've got to pay attention to where you are today. This is not a day to go doing other things. It's a day to stay tuned with the weather. Don't unplug from us today. That's the biggest thing. Okay, And track radar updates. You guys know full well we're going to have updates streaming. For 20 to 30 minutes at a time once things get starting if we're not live so make sure you are staying tuned with us today guys it's the, it's the day that you don't want to unplug from us um at this point rose don't pay attention to those numbers okay i tell people this all the time when you're looking at that map i see it a million times don't pay attention to those numbers don't pay attention to the highest risk it's not high or nothing it's you have a tornado threat and you need to take it seriously that's the biggest thing. I'm not harping on anybody right now. I'm just concerned. because I'm, I, I see people do this all the time where it's either high or nothing. And it should never be that way. It's very concerning. It should never be that way. So make sure you're staying tuned with us at this point. Okay, uh, But just don't focus on those numbers at this point. So uh, let me see here. So Lisa, I see yours on YouTube. Would it be a high tornado risk in southeastern Arkansas? Like I said before. Don't focus on the high tornado risk or a high this or a high that. It's, don't even worry about that. Just worry about the fact that the entire state has a tornado risk and you need to have a game plan ready to go regardless of what happens. If it doesn't happen in your area, you're good. You're gravy. That's awesome. If it does, you have a game plan. Schools, I don't. Uh, our schools are out today, so I don't. I don't even think schools are even in place um, at this point. So uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm just going over everything right now here. Okay, so uh, will a hotel be safe for your trade? Yes. Uh, yeah, let's, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because a mobile home, you know, let's, and that's actually on yep. the graphic front. Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. Um, there it is right there. And 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 yes, actually a a hotel, places like that, you know, anything sturdy. You know, manufactured homes and mobile homes are are definitely not the best place to be, and that's actually where we see a lot of a lot of our of our of our injuries come from in in severe severe weather are trees falling through mobile homes tornadoes hitting mobile homes because in the south that is a very common thing 
is a very, very, very common thing, especially outside of your metropolitan areas. Yep. You do you do tend to see a lot more of your mobile home and, tra and, 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 and your tra trailers. Now, given they have definitely developed them better over the years, however, they're still not as sturdy as a brick style building or a building that is that is reinforced. And keep keep this in mind, your exterior walls stuff can go through a lot faster yep. in a in a mobile home than they than than they can a siding or or brick home. So yes, to answer your question, yes, a hotel would be uh, better. Again, if you have a storm cellar, great. If you have some if you have an interior part of your house and can't make it to a a hotel, some protection is better than none at all, is what I always say. If you're driving, I see a lot of people are driving tonight. This is a big travel day. A lot of folks coming home from the holidays. If you're out traveling, don't take shelter under a bridge simply because you know, the bridges tend to create a, a larger wind tunnel. And as a tornado goes across, even, even a small line or damaging wind event goes, goes across a bridge, it creates a wind tunnel inside that bridge to even suck, suck you out or you be hit by debris as well. Yep. The best place to be in a severe weather event in your car is in your car. Yep. Because your car at least has the protection around you. Mm -hmm. Will it be perfect? No. But could it prevent you from possible serious injury or death? Yes. That's, to me. That's the biggest thing here, guys. So, uh, let me see here. It's going over everything right now. So, uh, Winston Fort Smith see the severe thunderstorms, guys. Here's the timing of this right now. I'm going to go back to it real quick. Uh, biggest thing I want to stress, too, before we go back to the timing, is this. No difference between a watch and a warning. I get this all the time whenever we deal with severe weather here, okay? And I know a lot of people are new here. They don't know, you know, about our page and all the other stuff, which is perfectly fine. But a watch means that conditions are favorable for potential seeing severe weather, which includes the potential of tornadoes. Warning means that it's imminent or it's about to, or it's imminent or it's already occurring. So you have minutes. We're going to give you as much heads up notice as physically possible. Don't waste time today. Don't try to go get famous. Tornado photos, tornado videos. If you're safe and away from it, that's 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 gravy. That's awesome. But if you are in the path, don't worry about the footage. Don't worry about trying to get famous on Facebook or on YouTube or anything like that. Your life comes first before social media. I'm going to tell you that right now. So make sure that you have a game plan. Make sure if your warning gets issued, you go to shelter. That's the number one thing. Because if you go outside, then you're going to, you're going to, it's, it's a monkey see, monkey do situation. You go outside, everybody else is going to be wanting to go outside. You start taking photos, everybody else is going to start wanting to take photos. And that's what lives potentially could be lost. So take the initiative, go to shelter. Don't worry about trying to get the photo or video or anything like that. If you have it, that is awesome. If you're away from the path and stuff like that, that is awesome. If you work for emergency management and you're in this live stream, send us an inbox as well because we're going to need you guys as well. If you're an experienced storm spotter, send us a message as well. We're going to keep you guys contacted this, this morning as well. So, um, yeah, there you go. There you go. So, you have all the ingredients in place. It's just like baking a cake. Okay, a warning means the cake's in the oven and it's about to come. It needs to, it's about to come out. That's the biggest thing. Okay, make sure you have a game plan for the day here. I love your comments, Cynthia. Love your comments. So, um, let me see here. So about the fog, that's what we call the instability beginning coming. It yeah, should but clear your out. Moisture, your yeah. moisture is moving over a very cold ground. You yeah, have, you have very warm air moving over cold ground right now. And because we just we do I mean literally seven days ago we were dealing with an with an Arctic outbreak. Yep. So here we are, you know, you have very cold ground, ground temperatures in the thirties by right now and all this warm more serious moving moving over. That's why you have that fall. If you get a little bit of sunshine that, that will burn off and, and actually, you know, as everything moves uh, north, this will continue that fall will continue to burn off as we head toward mid the morning. Again, EML. We've mentioned this several times over the last couple of days as everything starts to mix out. Yep. So that's something we're going to be watching. And those that are wondering what does that mean, it means elevated mix layer. So basically think of it as, and I wish I had a, a bottle to show you, but um, basically what it means is there's a cap in place in the atmosphere. Thunderstorms can't go over that cap and it cannot become severe. Yep. So basically what that means is that if you have an email in place, it's going to hold a lid 
on severe weather. Hence the reason why we don't have a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity right now. If we had morning rain, we wouldn't be so concerned. But we don't because there's a cap in place that's keeping things at bay. Once that cap leaves, the problem is you're going to be in the afternoon and the evening and your atmosphere is just going to destabilize. It's just like shaking a soda bottle and the cap's in place. And as soon as you turn that cap off, the soda comes out. That's what happens. And that's how you get these yeah. severe thunderstorms across the board. So uh, thank, you for, thank you for all the warnings. Yeah. That's what we're here for, guys. We're not here to hype or anything like that. We're here to keep you guys updated um, on the situations here. So uh, let me see here. Right now, I'm currently looking at um, computer model guidance here, and I'm looking at what's called the um, HREF model, um, and it's rather concerning. Um, just looking at everything right now here, and this is something that we like using as well uh, when you're this far in range. Um, it's just a tornado threat. I mean, it's really harping on a tornado threat. And I'm going to be honest with you. Um, Cam pointed it out. Both round one and round two have a significant tornado potential. Yeah. I really, really wouldn't be shocked to see some sort of a moderate risk come out by the time we get towards that 11.30 or 3 o'clock time frame. If they decide not to do it, that's going to be perfect. That's going to be fine. That means that this will be a solid enhanced risk and you still need to treat it as seriously as you would a moderate risk. Yeah. So make sure you have a game plan ready to go. The significant tornado threat has significantly increased across much of the state. Something that we're just gonna have to watch very closely. But I'm gonna go back to the timing because a lot, a lot of people are kind of wondering, kind of following, you know, what's the timing gonna be and stuff like that. This is timing right now. We've shown this map a million times. This mm -hmm. is the timing right now, guys. Make sure if you have to save it or screenshot it, do it, okay? Yeah. That way and you I have actually it. think you're round two, maybe get a little bit later. Yeah, that's the uh, yeah. something we're, we're gonna watch. Yeah, right. We're gonna we're gonna tweak this throughout. I the think day. we're gonna have to tweak our round two. I believe it's gonna be a little bit later, which is but concerning. I still think here's the thing: the, the, the big thing about round two, I do think you're gonna talk Western Arkansas more of the eight to eleven time frame. I think your seven to eleven is gonna switch to more of a nine to midnight time frame. Eastern Arkansas, I still think this is going to be across the river by about 2 to 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Because eventually when this is into the line, it's going to speed out of the state. Yeah. But until we get to that linear mode, that's when your tornado risk is going to be significantly increased. Even if we lose daylight, the, the daytime heating, even if we lose the instability a little bit, where the problem is you have so, so much southerly air coming up, up out of the Gulf, that's going to continue to increase that instability in, in between each round. Yep. Not as much as, as building before the first round, but remember, all you need is 500 yep. to get severe weather in the wintertime. Goodness. Um, this is very, very concerning coming in from uh, the, H, the, H, the HREF model. Um, and this is the... Um, the, the the what we call the updraft holistic tracks and I'm going to show you guys this um, at this point take this with a grain of salt okay I'm like I said before we're not trying to freak anybody out we're not trying to cause panic or anything like that I'm gonna show you guys this real quick and Derek this is gonna be new to you so you need to watch this as well this this is uh, no it's oh it's new this is a new run um, oh, new, okay, this is a new run sorry. it's a new run um, this is the HREF model for this evening with round number one and round number two. This is all of those holistic tracks across Western Arkansas. Now keep this in mind, I said before, this doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna see a tornado or it's gonna go right over your house or anything like that. It's the updraft, it's the, it's the rotation in the atmosphere. Nine times out of ten, what does that mean? It'll mean a tornado warning or something like that. Remember, you've got to connect that rotation to the ground to get a tornado. Yeah. That's why we tell you guys so much when you see these maps, don't immediately think it's going to be a tornado um, a, a tornado track or something like that. It's just concerning us right at this point. So this is what it's wanting to do. And I mean, boy, southwest Arkansas, that I-30 corridor, really needs to be watched this evening and into the night. That's going to be the biggest thing. And it's accounting for both, both that round one and that round two at this given point here, guys. It's really holding on in that area down here in southwestern Arkansas. So that's going to be his biggest thing. Derek, I'm going to let you take now, that Okay. One. Sorry, so, I didn't mean to. <laughs> all right, Ben, so here's a interesting scenario with the cold ground temps. Yeah. Can it reduce the severe weather risk? 
The re and so this is where you have more moist air moving over that cold ground. That's creating our, a lot of our low clouds right now. Now, that being said, low clouds tend to do keep a risk slightly, very slightly lower. I think that with, with a grain of salt, because you have so much other ingredients than just than just instability, they go into severe weather events. Now, that being said, you already have high high instability even with the cloud cover. Yep. So the cold ground really doesn't affect your severe weather that much because it's you know if the the cold ground affects more of a winter weather, ground temperature affects more wind winter weather than it does severe weather because you're not worried about accumulation on the on the ground. But the biggest thing is is that a cold ground does or a wet ground is create the fall, creates the cloud cover that can somewhat help to inhibit early early morning destabilization. Today we've not seen that. Now, if if your if your elevated mix layer continues mixing out those clouds and it and that's what it typically does throughout the day, it tends to mix out a little bit of, of this of this junk or, or the junk that we call morning the morning commission stuff stuff like that that you would need to inhibit the severe weather. Now, we don't have widespread rain this one. We have isolated showers. Isolated showers will not affect your overall risk area. If you have widespread heavy rain this morning, then yes, we will be talking about a lower risk. Right now, we don't have that. So, so to answer your question to an extent, the cold ground can affect it, but overall, yep. not the entire risk. Yep, I agree. Um, I'm looking at something, and this is, this is pretty awesome over here this is all the computer model guys i'm gonna go back over um uh, selena i saw your comment about you know can you show more model guys at this point guys we're trying to bounce between every single question right now some are asking timing some are asking this some are asking that so be patient with this guys we're gonna try to get to everybody as quickly as we can here this is the reason why we tell you guys five days in advance and that way we try to keep the questions now but we understand a lot of people doesn't see it until right now so just keep that in mind. Also, I love this comment. You know, help it uh, help easy storm anxiety. That's what we do. That's what we love to do. Uh, we don't like panicking people. I don't. I don't think anybody in this world like going out and you know panicking people. But we try to bring the anxiety level down. That's what we try to do. But we tell you guys how it is. We don't sugarcoat or anything. We tell you how it is. So I'm gonna go over to this. And uh, Derek, this is a combination of every single cam model right now. Mm -hmm. The combination of every single one. This is uh, the HR, the HR NSSL, the FE3, the high res NAM, all of your CAM models yep. combined into one model. So this is pretty cool, um, cool, pretty cool software that we have here. But you can see what it does. This is, let me see if I can get the timing correct. Uh, this is going to be right around uh, 1 p.m. So you can see the supercell start to go up. Now, this is what's concerning me. This is round number one and round number two combined into one. That's what's worrying me right now. Round number one moves out, but you see this back over here. This is supercell development down here in southwestern Arkansas. The I-30 corridor needs to be watched very closely along with this up here in northeastern Arkansas. And then what happens is that moves away and then you get just a, a lot of uh, supercells developing across the board here so i know this kind of looks like you know winter weather or something like that what does this all mean and everything like that this is a combination of all of your cam models right now so this is probably the best best representation on what radar is going to look like uh by the time we get towards this evening area yeah. this is right around that eight o'clock time frame now here's your pick your poison this is a pick your poison system Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, South Dakota, they're gonna be dealing with a massive ice storm followed by a winter, followed by a snow a snowstorm. Yep. The, they're gonna have thunderstorms up there as well. Yeah. But there's gonna be more of a freezing rain event yep. to a snow event. So this is a picture poison system. You can have flooding, severe weather, or winter weather. It's a really take your pick kind of kind of event here. This is a classic January event. Yep for the country, the middle part of the uh, country, as we head throughout the next 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, but right our concern, again, is for Arkansas yep. and the natural state, and two different rounds of severe weather. Um, again, damage of wind, large hail, and tornadoes, along with the possibility of flooding. Yep, and that's gonna be the biggest thing that we have to just stress to everybody right now. So we're gonna go back over to this. 
Um, and we're gonna go over to um, the, give me one second, this, this graph right here, this graph right here. This is what we call nighttime severe weather safety. So the weather radios are gonna be your best friend. If you don't have a weather radio, don't worry about it. We're gonna keep you guys updated on that, okay? Mm -hmm. Keeping a flashlight in place, okay? Making sure you have a game plan with that. And also general reminders, stay away from the windows, going to an interior room, that means a room that has all those walls around it. Um, if you live in a mobile home, I would highly suggest um, trying to find a friend or a family member to kind of get into a sturdier shelter. But if you can't, take a look at your environment as well. Do you have a grocery store nearby? Do you have a gas station? Somewhere more sturdier than a mobile home because this is a situation you don't want to be in a mobile home here. Okay, so um, seems a lot of people are fit stating around round number one. Round number two is going to be just as dangerous. I love your comment, Nicole. A lot, and this is what happens. A lot of people focus on round number one and then they forget about round number two. Round number two comes in and it's it's like, a, it's like a right hook. It hits you right in the face. So make sure that you're paying attention to both. This is a day that you're just going to have to be weather aware until Tuesday morning. That's just what's going to happen. You're going to stay weather aware until Tuesday morning at this point. So um, timing right now. I said before, we're trying to get to you guys right now. Uh, Stacy, um, sun is coming out in Streetport. Now that was that cloud break that I was showing you earlier. That will be moving. That's moving north at about 50 to 60 miles per hour. So it will be here right around lunch. It'll be here right around lunch here in, in central Arkansas. So that's concerning me right now. But looking at the combination of every single cam model right now, boy, you're gonna you're you're gonna be in some serious trouble by the time we get towards the evening and into the night, especially for our folks down there in central and south Arkansas. So what do you do if you're in a mobile home and there's no other building around that's safe enough? Now in that particular situation, Derek, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you handle that one. Alright, so the big thing with the mobile home, so if you can't get to a shelter, you know, we're near a shelter, you know, I know most communities do have a storm uh, shelter, as a matter of fact, um, I do have a link that we're going to share on the page okay. um, that has a list of shelters around the state, okay. um, and, but, and we'll put that on the page here, here after the live stream is over with, but, um, the biggest thing to do if you in a mobile home, if you can't find a shelter, have nobody get to shelter, at least get somewhere under a table, something that can at least protect you from falling debris yeah you know a desk even even a, i mean even under a bed and you know mobile homes are definitely not safe and we urge caution with that but if you can't if last resort if you have to get under something that can protect your body yeah that's the biggest thing grab a helmet you know a mattress you know something to protect your head if you have to do it but if you if at all costs if you can get out of that mobile home that would be great but if you can it's like last resort like Derek said before that's going to be the biggest thing here okay so yeah people are saying it's starting to feel hot temperatures are already in the yeah. 70s man it is ridiculous across the state right now for it being first we're in 67. january yeah 67 here at the yeah Center we're 67 right we've got a south southwest wind that's concerning yeah. south southwest wind that means you're going to have um, that email come in here in just a little bit. So we're gonna go back over to the timing real quick again so before we're kind of jumping between um, graphics. This is the biggest thing I wanna stress, okay? Timing right now for everybody at this given point is going to shift a lot. As soon as this live stream is over, me and him are gonna coordinate um, on a timing map to kind of give you guys a, a more specific timing. But right now, I'd say anybody that's from the I-49 corridor down to South Arkansas, have a game plan ready to go to that. You, you don't, 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 don't wait for it to occur. Just go ahead and be in that mindset. That way, if a warning happens, you react quick. Reaction times are going to be quick as well because your storm motions today. Um, another cool thing I'm seeing is a combination of your high risk, your your cam models in terms of storm motions. Yeah. So at 50 to 60 miles per hour. All right, we're so get that's reports from North Arkansas, Walnut Ridge, North Arkansas temperature down in the mid 60s. Already. Yeah, but dew points in the 60s as well. So we're seeing a rapid increase in the moisture, but again, also sandy. So just to let you know, so this is the significant tornado threat. It has increased. It has gone further. Big time. Further north from yesterday. As you, you can see, it is now all the way up to just south of Fayetteville. Now all the way to Mountain View and into Jonesboro as well. Last night, it was only to the metro. Yep. Just to the north of the metro. So it, it jumped another 50 to 100 miles north. And 
It was a significant jump, and and that's the only thing Kevin and I saw this one. Like, okay, so they jumped it a little bit north. Yeah. And they also bumped the temper. And keep in mind, the entire the entire medium risk is over pretty much this entire hatch risk. So yep. the medium risk is also a hatch risk for tornadoes. But in the north Arkansas, don't let your guard down because again, we have seen tornadoes occur no matter where a risk area is. So do not let your guard down on that. Now, also, let's go take a look. Do we have an updated look at our temperatures? Yep, that's and right. our at, at our and our instability. That's what I'm this is something right that I'm s i am really want to look at. Yeah. Um let's zoom in on Boy, in North, the, North Arkansas Northwest Arkansas has jumped significantly. Let's zoom in on the natural state yeah. because this is the biggest thing I'm seeing. Fayetteville. This is my concern. Fayetteville was 45 degrees when we started this live stream. Yep. There are now 57 there's degrees. Your, there's your instability job. Your warm air has finally surged over the Ozarks. Yeah. This is where our concern was. We were trying to figure out, will that warm front be able to get through the Ozarks? Will it be able to jump the Ozarks? It just did. Yeah. So, and, and we've been live for an hour. About an hour. Fayetteville was 45, 45 degrees. 45 when we started, started yeah. Stream. They jumped 12 degrees in an hour. Again, insane folks. Little Texas insane. Kansas, 72, Min is, is up to 68, Little Rock is still at 70. This is why we're saying the severe threat is up there today because you're seeing this warm moisture continue to push north and it's surging north. It's not just pushing, it's surging north. Look at your dew points already in El, El Laredo and there's 70 degrees already. So you're going to make it to 70 degrees down there for today. And this is at 9 a.m., by the way. 9 a.m. folks. This this literally feels like an, a freaking April risk um, versus a um, a January risk, guys. So that's that's the biggest thing here, and you're gonna see this. Uh, this is over the last six hours here, and I'm gonna let this loop and take a look at this. This is over the last six hours. This is your moisture uh, surge across the state. And you can see, like Derry mentioned before, it was struggling, struggling, trying to get over the Ozarks, which is nat what naturally happens. Um, because naturally, you know, as it tries to vent over the, the, the mountains, and you can see what's going on. Over the last couple of um, frames here, the last hour or so, like you mentioned, it's finally jumped over the Ozarks, so it's getting to the Ozarks yep. very quickly. Your dew points are rapidly surging into northwestern Arkansas here. So this is quickly setting up to be a very dangerous situation for us here in Arkansas. Um, dew points already near 70 degrees, 72 now near Alexandria yep. down there. So. That's going to be the biggest thing here. Uh, one thing I want to show to you guys as well. Let me see if I can get this up um, on our side here. So it's going to be give me one second here, and I'm going to see if I can get this pulled up. There it is, right there. So this is going to be. I have to stand up for just a bit so I can get a, a view of this. And this is what we call the surface sin. And there it is, right there. Should be popping up here in just a little bit. So. May have to go back over to this, take this off the screen. Now, this is concerning. Now, this is uh, what Joshua is trying to point out right now. This is the cap in place, or what we call the sin, or what, what's called the, um, can, well, I think it was the, the, the lamest terms, the invention in the atmosphere. Basically, it's a lid yeah. in place. And whenever you see these blues and stuff like that, that means that there's just, there's a lid. That's why you don't have a lot of shower and thunderstorm development um, at this moment is because there's a lid in place across the state. Once this goes away, that's where you're going to get the severe thunderstorms, potentially the tornado threat as and well. And the biggest thing, if you look out there in, in Oklahoma, Oklahoma, yeah. now there's a big cap in place right now. This is infecting into the state. Yeah. This is why we said we're going to have to watch this closely. Warm moist air with the cap in place means nothing can form ahead of your first round of severe weather this afternoon. So, that being said, you know, and this is kind of infecting in, but you're also losing your cap as well. So that's actually moving uh, northwest yeah. toward your toward your low. Which is, which makes sense because yeah. it's venting the drier air. Uh, but the biggest thing is your cap is still holding strong. Yeah. That's the biggest thing across and the state right eroding. now. Yeah. Now, this is this is the thing. If this starts to erode, we could be talking about multiple rounds of severe weather to, today. Yeah. And so, but. Even if with the with, with the road cat, if you don't have your uh, lifting me 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 mechanism. mechanism, which is our trough coming in, it's way out west. then you're not going to have anything form until that cat until that trough gets a little bit closer, and that's what we're going to be watching for as we head into the afternoon. So again, to midday you're good to go. 
I say one or two o'clock in the in the afternoon is when we both start need to start paying attention. So we out here. And then as we head into the evening and the, and, and and overnight hours is when the the biggest risk is going to be. Yep. And there's your lows gonna be right over here. So you can see there's your venting moisture beginning to come in right there um, across the state. And this is the biggest thing that we're worried about is making sure that you have a game plan ready to go for dead guys. It's going to be a very dangerous situation for us here um, in the natural state. But that's the biggest thing to answer your question, Joshua. Uh, there is a cap in place. As a matter of fact, uh, if I can get my mouse to co correctly work with me here. There we go. Um, this is what we're watching here at this point. Now, this is at the surface level. We're not looking at anything um, higher than that. Let me see if I can switch this over to this. And this is the same thing. So this is your zero to ninety, and then your your surface. So you definitely have a cap in place at this point, Sandy. Um, right now, based off of what I've seen with the combination of all of your short range models, I don't. If, if anybody sees it, it's going to be Southwest Arkansas. Yeah. If anybody sees it, it's going to be there. If they don't, then they're probably going to leave it as is. Or they may try to expand it further north because your moisture is venting northward very, very, very quickly. Yep. So keep that in mind. That's what I'm saying. My corner up there in northwestern Arkansas, you're not out of the woods. You may end up in the enhanced risk before it's all said and done. This may end up being what we call just a statewide yep. enhanced risk for severe weather. And that's perfectly fine. We don't need it going any higher. But it should, normally, it doesn't yes, matter. Right, right, exactly. It doesn't matter what the risk area is. It right. should not matter what the risk area is. If there's a chance of severe weather, just be prepared, not scared. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Yep. Yeah. So let me see here. Yeah, BB's under um, that, that flood they're, warning. They're under under flood warning, warning is a watch. Flood flood watch. watch. It's a watch. It's a watch right now. There are no warnings in the state. There are no watches in the state other than that flash flood watch okay. right now. So that's going to be the biggest thing here. Elizabeth, it's not a wait and see at this point. It's having a game plan. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, do not do that today. Don't just wait and see what's going to happen, stuff like that. Have a game plan ready to go for today. Anything after, I'm just going to put it like this. Anything after noon today, have that mindset of, hey, severe weather can happen at any moment. Afternoon today, that's going to be missing. No matter where you are in the state, just just go ahead and be in that mindset after after lunch today. Just have a game plan ready to go. That's the biggest thing. We live in Arkansas. Don't second guess anything. Be over prepared. It's so much better to be caught. Um, <laughs> it's so much better to be caught with your pants down. Which is which is why I, I agree. I agree. So uh, that's I love your comment as well, Rose. It's a confident situation. It's not old tornadoes are going to happen in the hands because it's a high risk. It's not that at all. It should never be that way. So um, also, Kim, the flooding threat. Turn around, do not drown. If we start seeing flood warnings go out, yep. we're going to treat them as with the same respect as the tornado warning. Yep. Okay? Flash, the flooding threat, I know it's being swept under the water because it's not as important as a tornado threat, which is weird because you're flooding, you're flooding deaths are much higher yep. than tornadoes. You're flooding, yeah. Your flooding deaths are actually like, higher than any severe, than any severe, severe, severe event. Event. Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest thing. Um, so. Another thing, Nikki, yes. Just yes. We're gonna say I'm just gonna say yes to your question. Yes, Oklahoma and Texas both, yep. and Arkansas, and Louisiana. Yes, and Missouri. We're gonna and so the storm's gonna pop everywhere today. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those days where one storm goes up and also another one and another one, and it's gonna be one of those situations around one starts going boom, 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 boom. It's a, it's a matter of when it pops. Yep. And then round two is gonna start Oklahoma and Texas. It's gonna move east. Round one is gonna move southwest to northeast of the I thirty corridor. Round two is gonna be moving. Kind of east, the storms are still moving southwest to northeast, but the main system is going to be moving east. So you have two different rounds, but yes, they're going to form in both areas. Okay, give me one second. Okay. I'm, in yeah. I'm in communication with Cam, trying to um, get get a game plan for uh, for everything right now. So. Yeah, so oh, I think that's I, meant, I, I think that was meant to be several, several instead of seven. seven. Now here's the thing. All right, so when I, we go to warnings. I pray that's not the case. When we go to warnings, the, all right, is it possible for several tornado warnings to be issued at the same time? Yes. Now, that being said, November 4th, we had several on the ground at the same time. We had some in Northwest Arkansas, some in Southwest Arkansas, all on the ground at the same time. I remember that event very distinctly because was, we were covering. Yeah, and there was also one event in March of last year, March 2021. Yeah. Uh, we had several tornadoes on the ground at the exact same time. Yep. I pray it doesn't get to that point. 
I absolutely pray it doesn't get to that point. But if it does, we will be here. Yep. We've got not only just the two of us, we've got an entire team yep. that's going to keep updating the page and everything like that. We're going to have all the warnings on the page and stuff like that. And today, in particular, we're going to have a lot of, yeah. you know, tornado warnings and stuff like that and everything like that. The spirit under warnings we will address as well. Yeah. They're just as important. But if that were to be the case, then we will have both coverage kind of going over. So, I, like I said, I pray that's not the case. I've, yeah. I've seen situations get that extreme before where you've had them touch down all at once, uh, which makes coverage harder, but it's not impossible. Yeah. We can get it done. Just That's going to be a, something that we're just going to have to watch very closely. Yeah. But I love your comment. Um, also, the snow questions, and I, I, I get this a lot, a lot this time of the year when it gets warm. Folks, we're not done with winter. It, it, winter just doesn't just go poof after one event. We're not done. This happens a lot in the winter. We talked about this in the winter outlook. Yep. Cold, warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, because of your golf mix going to be so warm. So we're not done with winter. Okay, but right now we're focused on severe weather. And we're not done with winter or anything like that here. We'll we'll address all that yeah. once we get past today. But I'm not I'm we're not done with winter at all. This is part of winter. Winter in Arkansas don't just stay snowy. It it goes severe, it goes warm and stuff like that. That thing happens ha happens a lot. <laughs> Matt, great comment. Pay attention to your warnings, especially at night. That's what I'm worried about. That night event in southwestern Arkansas. If you see stuff start to go up in Southwest Arkansas, don't try to go out and go get it. It's nighttime event. It's going to be dangerous at this point. So let me see here. I think that's it. Yep. Um, Alan, great comment. Um, if your power goes out, are your computers on backup power? Yes. 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 And we've double checked it. We're going to triple check it this morning. But yes, we are on yep. backup power if it does occur. Uh, we will have our weather center ready to go and we've got you know stuff we're ready to go to generator and everything like that so yeah. we're good so I think that's it yeah. in terms of all the comments and stuff guys yeah. so, so the, the big thing is this will be our last official forecast live stream unless massive changes happen yeah we may do a quick live around lunch yeah if the risk increases or if we see things you know that that need change otherwise we're going to be Transitioning to severe weather coverage, yep. meaning where the next time legal live will be for twenty in the morning. You will be posting watches all day long. Um, be sure to follow us on Twitter at ARKWX Watchers. That's where your warnings will be posted. Yep. Cameron also also has a Discord. Yep. That that will have the NOAA weather radio ready to go. If you have this, if you don't have it, download it on your phone. Download it on a computer. That way it's super easy it, to get. It's super and it's easy. very super easy, and it's free. Yeah, and yeah, you, you ain't got to worry about it. Yeah, you can listen to the radio there as it comes in. Another thing, obviously, follow us on Facebook because that's where we're, we we will be live. YouTube as well. If, if you have a smart TV, be sure you can get us on YouTube on your TV and follow our coverage there. We've gotten several inboxes in of people watching us on YouTube during December weather coverage. Now, the thing is. Watches will be on the main page and Twitter. We will have maps throughout the day. Yeah. Warnings and stuff like that. Now, now radar. That's going to be a thing. I know people around the state want radar, consistent radar. We will have radar updates on Twitter and our regular page. But during live coverage, everything will be right here on on the on the live stream. Yeah. So that's going to be the biggest thing. It's going to be a day where we're going to be watching multiple different aspects. Throughout the day, we're going to be following storm storm reports as well. Yeah, we have all set up, ready yet to go. But but, but the biggest thing is Twitter at ARKWX Watchers, Facebook. You already know where to find us. YouTube, you know where to find us. Yep. we will be keeping you updated all day long. We will have more information through throughout the day. Next 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 uh, uh, around 11, 11 30. Yep. So we'll be watching you. Uh, Actually, for no, that. it's ten thirty to eleven. Yeah. Ten thirty to eleven. Yeah, and. Again, when the first watch goes out, we will we, we, we will have, have it out uh, the, this afternoon. But we thank you for watching us, trusting us. Just be cautious throughout the day. Stay weather aware. And we will be here all day. Right, right here on your source, source for all things, things. Arkansas weather.